Well, good morning to everyone. Buongiorno a tutti. Uh, this is another one of those uh, Italian lessons that I have the pleasure of uh, giving here from Insegna uh, Booksellers and Tompadula TV on YouTube. Uh, these are free lessons uh, and uh, I recommend that uh, you start from lesson one and work your way through. They're all available on my uh, Tom Padula uh, Facebook page and eventually they'll also be on the insegna.com um, website. So that's basically it. By now, I think that the people who are following me will know exactly what I'm saying, but anyone new and uh, the lessons are not repeated, they continue. Uh, and we started with uh, saying that uh, la pratica batte la grammatica, ma senza la grammatica non si può migliorare o perfezionare la lingua che vuoi imparare. So you have to, you have to uh, be very precise about um, what you really want to do. And if you want to learn Italian, uh, then all communication uh, channels are available to you. Books, TV, radio, uh, you know, courses. What I do, I never take away from anyone's work. I always try to add to it uh, because as a consultant of Italian uh, in the state of Victoria from 76 to 80, I did just that. I encouraged other people uh, to uh, develop their skills uh, for classroom teaching. And it was at that time that uh, the teaching of Italian really uh, was spurred on in, uh, in Melbourne. Because in 1974, there were only 14 schools, uh, high schools, where Italian was taught, even though the migrants had been here for uh, 20 years plus. And uh, it was as a result of uh, the department uh, calling upon me uh, as the first Italian consultant for Victoria and I had the pleasure of speaking to Ian Adams and Jeff Adams, they gave me the job at the time as they were inspectors of languages. So since then I have, uh, and even before that, uh, from the University of Melbourne days where I was in theatre with Professor McCormick and I have his book here as well. So I have been very fortunate to be in touch with very important people who uh, gave me the opportunities that I, as a result of that, have used for the rest of my career and my life. So I come to these lessons uh, with a, a view of uh, wanting to uh, share my knowledge uh, free of charge. I don't, I don't think, you know, adults uh, need to be paying for um, the interest that they develop. And I was very pleased to see this week uh, as a result well we had a chat with I had a chat with Calvin Thompson uh, in this history uh, it's available in my history uh, program on Thursdays and we spoke about the TAFE technical and further education system in Victoria should be free of charge uh, should be free for all adults uh, if you want to do anything that's special they don't have to spend a lot of money it's all uh, requires just a little bit of um, uh, a little bit of understanding that um, adults who want to change careers and who want to learn more about anything else, anything that they don't know, uh, they sh the initial, at, at least the initial part, should be free. And the teachers can be teachers from day schools, uh, and they can uh, uh, they can have a you know, couple of hours at night, and uh, TAFE could pay for that. Uh, that's the way it was in the 1980s where we developed uh, adult evening schools at Princess Hill and the uh, Carberg High Evening School. So uh, my credentials are there for people to see. Uh, and uh, now it's really time for, to spread the word that the teaching of Italian is here on my li live on Facebook and people can take advantage of it uh, without taking away from the work that all other teachers of Italian are doing so in such a stellar way, wherever they are. Okay, so basically that's it. It's 11.30. I've done my spiel. 
And uh, I just want to go back now to what I was doing, uh, in, you know, the actual lesson. So how did we start? Well, we started this way here. We started with this, the nine parts of speech. If you remember, uh, all languages share this. They all have nouns. They all have articles. Well, maybe, you know, some languages may not have, but I have to check that out. But most of the Roman Romance languages, they do have the article. Adjectives have to be there for all languages. Pronouns the same when you don't want to use the same word over and over again. So you put a pronoun instead, a pronoun. It helps the noun, you know. Mary has done this, Mary has done that, Mary... Well, rather than Mary, you just say, Mary, she has done this, and it keeps going. And the pronouns, when, uh, you know, they, they are instead of the noun. The verb, today I'm going to begin, the big, the, the big one, a verb. Verb is the, the action part of, uh, of uh, this machine that is called uh, language learning. It is like a... Uh, it's like, like a car. You have to know the parts if you want to be a mechanic of it. But you don't have to. Uh, you don't have to know all those in order to speak it. La pratica. If you just practice, uh, but la grammatica. So if you are in Italy and you're just learning and you don't want to, you don't, you know, you don't want to write. You don't want to. You just pick it up as you, as a lot of people do. So they don't have the grammar. But without the grammar, like uh, in all. Uh, professions, you need the grammar, uh, you need the technical uh, skills in order to improve your practice. Then we did the adverbs, prepositions, conjunctions and exclamations. I've covered some of those. So the, today I'm going to present the verb and uh, I'm very happy to be doing it. Okay, so how are we going to start today? Very simple. Uh, I'm going to go to to enumeri. You remember we did one up to 39. Well, here we are. Enumeri. That's la pratica. So, uno, due, tre, quattro, cinque, sei, sette, otto, nove, dieci, undici, dodici, tredici, quattordici, quindici, sedici, diciassette, diciotto, diciannove, venti. 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, and 40. There we are. 41. Notice the TI. 40 drops the I. 41, 42. Oh, look, look, look at that. I missed one. 43 is missing. <laughs> Isn't that beautiful? So I'll put it in anyway afterwards. 44, 45, 47, 46 I missed as well. 48, 49. There you are. Because I did this uh, just a few minutes ago, I missed two, two numbers. But then I went to 50. Look at this. 50, 51, 52. 54, 53 is missing again, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60. So notice that when you miss something like this, uh, it's actually a good thing. You know why? Because you can, you know, because... Because you can correct it. And it's 41, 42, 43. Look at this. 43... And 45, 46, 46, and then 47, 48, 49, 50, 53, 53. Who said that teachers can't get it wrong? They can. All they have to do is do what I do now. So in other words, if you forget or whatever, and that's what happens to adults a lot. There we are. 40, 41, 42, 43. There's an accent on the E. 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50. And then you got 51, 52, 53 with an accent on the E. 54, etc. 59, 60. And what you can do too, even if you make mistakes, it doesn't matter. Because the mistakes 
making mistakes is part of learning and making mistakes is part of improving what you actually know. So that's, uh, that's the numbers and it'll go on like that until 100. Uh, and I'll do that in, you know, in the next few weeks, of course. Now, we said that last week we saw the pronouns. Look at the pronouns. You remember? Subject pronouns, indirect, uh, direct pronouns, indirect pronouns, reflexive pronouns, and adjectives. You remember the adjectives? Well, the adjectives, these are called the possessive adjectives. Look at that. Me or tu or suo, nostro, vostro, loro, or proprio, or tui. And then these are also can be pronouns as, as well. So when they are used by themselves, with, not in front of a word. So, but the plural of mio is miei. Mia is mie. Tuo, tuoi. Tua, tue. Suo, sua. Suoi, sue. Notice nostro, nostra, nostri plural, nostri plural. Vostro, vostra, vostri, vostre. But loro is the same. And so it's also proprio, propria. Uh, and altrui, altrui, uh, these two don't have the same uh, situation as that. Again, when I present this, I haven't done this for a long time. And so what happens here is that I revise my work, and so can you. But once you, it's like riding a bike. Once, you've know, once you know how to ride a bike, you don't forget. Once you know how to swim, you don't forget. So these are skills that the brain actually um, picks up and retains. So th these are the adjectives. Now, before I got to the verb, of course, what do I want to do? Uh, I want to do something else. Because, you know, I said la pratica, batte la grammatica. So uh, where am I going to put this? Here. Okay. So, and I'm going to, you know, go to Canta Pierro. Or maybe not Canta Pierro. Uh, yes, I'll do Canta Pierro to begin with. This is one of my favorite songs. Here it is. And you can sing it along with me. But before I, I show you, before I actually show you the words there, okay, I'll give you the words and then we'll sing it together. So I won't read it because I've got a lot to do today. So, canta Pierrot. Un sorriso. That's a smile. Il mondo. La vita. La gente. La chitarra. La canzone. Il cuore. Il ricordo. Il tempo. La farsa, il piacere, l'attimo, un ritmo, il jazz band, il tango. And then, il foxtrot, l'amor, il cor. How many of those words did you know? And that's how you develop your word, uh, you know, your, it's like word in the bank, in your brain. Now, the adjectives in here that you will meet in the song are Pallido, mesto, giocondo, ramingo, fida, stolta, fatale. So I went through the songs. And there we, here we go. Now let's have a look together. Yeah. Dove ten vai Pierrot? Pallido e mesto così. Pale and sad. Senza un sorriso, a smile, giocondo, happy. Sempre ramingo per il mondo. Ramingo is like a vagabond. Che vuoi sperare dalla vita qua giù? Quando ve gente che non ama più. Prendi la fida chitarra, ritorna a cantar, non lacrimar. Canta però la più stolta canzone del cuore. Canta perché... Se tu piangi si burlan di te. Non sospirar nel ricordo del tempo che fu. Devi nella vita recitare la farsa anche tu. So recita la farsa. So, you know, the, the game, la farsa, the, the, the things that come your way. You've got to look it up. But now you, I would like you to read it along with me. 
Okay, so let's go together. Guarda oimè la gioventù come saltella oggi di, brama soltanto il piacere, l'attimo sol vuol godere. È su di un ritmo fatal di jazz band, ballando tango o foxtrot se ne sta, credendo un ballo la vita, un ballo l'amor, uccide il cor. Canta Pierrot, la più stolta canzone del cuore, canta perché se tu piangi si burlano di te. Non sospirar nel ricordo del tempo che fu, devi nella vita recitare la farsa anche tu. So you can go to, uh, uh, to YouTube and you know, write in Canto Piero and someone will sing it. But before you go there, I'll sing it for you. Because when I sing, I actually don't have to follow the, uh, the music because the music, uh, it's like maths, it doesn't allow you for the pleasure of uh, saying the words and what they actually mean uh, when you sing them. But it's much better because that's what entertainment is all about. Okay, let's go. And you can sing along with me. Dove tem vai, Pierrot? Pallido e mesto così, senza un sorriso giocondo, sempre ramingo pel mondo, che vuoi sperare dalla vita qua giù, quando ve gente che non ama più. Prendi la fida chitarra, ritorna a cantar, non lacrimar. Canta Pierrot, la più stolta canzone del cuore. Canta perché se tu piangi si burlan di te. Non sospirar nel ricordo del tempo che fu. Devi nella vita recitare la farsa anche tu. Guardo in me la gioventù come saltello oggi di brama soltanto il piacere, l'attimo sol vuol godere, è su di un ritmo fatal di jazz band, ballando tango fox trot se ne sta, credendo un ballo la vita, un ballo l'amor. Uccide il cor, canta Pierrot, la più stolta canzone del cuore, canta perché se tu piangi si burlan di te, non sospirar nel ricordo del tempo che fu. Devi nella vita recitare la farsa anche tu. Well, thank you very much uh, to both Angela and uh, Colleen. I appreciate you being here and uh, pass the word. That's the way to do it. It's learning Italian doesn't have to cost much. It can be free of charge. And... Uh, after I've finished with you, you'll be able to learn any other language as well, uh, if you want to. Now, that was Canta Piero and the words as well. So, you can build up your um, word bank. You can build up your word bank by, you know, doing what I've just done there. You write them down, you write the words. Now, you remember what I said to you that I would uh, go back to the verb. Now, this is the beginning of the verb. This is the biggest part of the nine parts of speech. Here we are. There it is, the, v the verb, number five. Okay, so let's go to the beginning now. Here we are. The verb. In Italian, if you look up the infinitive of the verb in the dictionary, words, uh, verbs that end, uh, have got um, the following. That, all the verbs in Italian and in are, ere, or ire. So, are is first conjugation, ere is second conjugation, ire is the third conjugation, but in Italian, when I was at school there, they actually had 
as a fourth conjugation. But it, because dormire uh, conjugates a slightly, well, capire conjugates sl- differently from dormire. For example, I'll give you the, an example. Io dormo, tu dormi, lui dorme, etc. But capire, io capisco, tu capisci, lui capisce. So in other words, it's almost like a fourth conjugation. But a lot of, a lot of the ire verbs, they, they have co- commonalities between them. Now, each verb, when you look it up in a dictionary, you, you have seven moods of the verb. You look up the infinitive, the last one, number seven. So, in other words, parlare, ballare, cantare, they're the first conjugation. Dormire, number three. Prendere, number two. So, are, ere, ire. And then they conjugate. So, seven, there are seven moods. You have to learn what we are doing when, we, when I begin to actually teach you the, the, t- the tenses of the verb. I tempi del verbo in Italian. So, seven moods, indicative. That's about reality. Conditional, when there are conditions. Subjunctive, when it's an, something is hypothetical. Imperative, it's when you give a command or receive one. Gerund, it's when uh, it's over a period of time, a clause over a period of time, uh, a sentence. Participle, participle acts a bit like, in the verb, acts a bit like the adjective. And uh, they are used, the participle, the present participle and the past. The past participle then combines, uh, is used uh, to, com- to, to, have, to do compound tenses, which I will explain in a minute. And the infinitive. So those are the seven moods. And those are the three conjugations. Now, each one of these moods, each one of these moods, seven moods, Indicative, etc. Each one, the tenses, the, in the indicative mood, there are eight tenses. They are called the present. Now, these are simple tenses. The first four are simple, and the second four called compound tenses. The compound tenses use the auxiliary verbs of to be or to have, plus the past participle. That's this one here. The one that I said acts like an adjective. Okay, so you've got You've got a very simple scheme here. Four simple tenses, four compound tenses. You have to learn them off by heart. Uh, that's what we used to do at school uh, because you had to know those like you had to know the tables when you do maths. Well, if you don't know, you know, 7, 8, 56, 7, 7, 49. If you don't know it straight away, you don't know it. It's like when you you know doing theatre. If you don't, or you sing. If you don't know the words, well, you have to look them up. And if in, in the theatre you can't do it, you forget. You you know, uh, things go bad for you. So there are certain things that have to be very precise. And this is this is them. And now these are the tenses. These are the tenses. Okay. And then, i tempi. Okay. So, i tempi. I did it. In English, but I also did it in Italian, because some grammar books, some notes that I've taken, they didn't know, uh, they didn't know, uh, they had confused il trapassato remoto with the past anterior da culta plu perfect. So, uh, so I sort of decided to go with Professor McCormick's grammar book. And, you know, i tempi. So here are i tempi, uh, semplici, presente, imperfetto, passato, remoto, futuro. Notice there is only one presente and there is only one futuro, but there are two passati. Because the past is uh, much more complex. You can have things that just happened or they've happened a while back or they've happened a long, long time ago. So that's the passato remoto. Okay, these are now i tempi composti, semplici e composti. So these are the, the moods, the simple, simple tenses uh, and the compound tenses, we call them in English. So that's basically the introduction to the verb. Okay, now I'm going to do the next one. It's called La Mazzurca della Nonna, which I did last time, but I didn't do the words. So I'm going to go through the words of La Mazzurca della Nonna. But before I do that, before I do that, I better have a drink. 
Have a look at these words. L'orchestrina. Una danza. Una mazurka. And we, mazurka in English it's with a kai, but in Italian with a, it's with a se. So, before I, do, I, I got to la mazurka della nonna uh, and the words, what I, I would like to, to see, uh, I would like to see that um, uh, people actually, you know, come to lesson one and work their way through. Because the grammar part, I'm introducing as I go along. You can't do it all in one go. But la pratica is when you sing, when you read. Uh, th these are when you speak with someone else. You know, the, hai bisogno di qualcuno con cui parlare in italiano, altrimenti la lingua si perde, non, non si usa. Use it or lose it. Quindi la lingua parlata è importante, però è importante con gente che vuole parlare l'italiano. E anche se voi parlate il che voi chiamate il dialetto, la lingua locale dei vostri, delle vostre famiglie, va bene, meglio di niente. It's better than, because the, 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 le lingue locali, the dialects, are, are part of this language. And there are variants, because people, some people don't go to school, didn't go to school before, so they created words and phrases, etc. So it's very important uh, that, that you have contact with other people when learning a language. So join a group, uh, even a choral group where you can sing, you meet people, you know, speaking to older people too, or to younger ones, you can teach them what I'm doing now. Because once you do it yourself, you actually will be able to teach it. And I've seen it done. So it can be done. All right. So, la mazurka della nonna. Okay, let's go. These are the words. L'orchestrina. L'orchestrina. Notice the ina. The words in Italian, they can be... When they add ina, means l'orchestra is the orchestra. L'orchestrina is the small orchestra. Una danza. Una mazurka. L'aria. Notice I'm using both... The definite articles and indefinite articles. La quadriglia. That's a type of dance. A square dance we call it in English. Il tempo. La pariglia. You know, two, uh, two oxen, you know, pulling a, a plough. La pariglia. La pariglia, that's, it refers to two together. Il landò. I think it's like... Um, Oh, it's like a, an electric pole. I tanghi, that's plural of tango. Il tango, i tanghi. And I haven't explained to you how the G acquires the H for plural, i tanghi. This is one of the exceptions we have to learn. I can't do it all in one go, at the explanations. I foxtrot, la nonna, le trecce, i mutandoni. Okay, il nonno, la mano. Notice the O, oh, mano, is actually an exception. The, the word ends in O, oh, but the Italians call it la mano. And the plural is le mani. Isn't it funny? It's one of those words that uh, has retained an exception, exceptional use. La scaletta, la bicicletta, il primo piano. I giovincelli, i baffoni, il tempo, le mani. La carioca is another type of South American dance. Il sassofono, il grammofono, la nostalgia, la gioventù. And I always, I always had che non torna più, that it doesn't come back. And also, in uh, this uh, particular uh, song, there are some adjectives. And again, the adjectives, americana, paesana. So it's americano, americani, americane, 
paisano, paisana, paisani, paisane. Bel, belli, mia, sua, primo, lontano, antica. Now the C-I in the plural becomes antica with C-I-C, because I have to explain the G and the C, when they come into plural uh, with uh, the vowels, they change. But that, that's in the phonology part, and I haven't touched on that yet. So that's, the, these are the words that you will find in this song. And the song is La Mazurka della Nonna. And, you know, someone knows that I love to say, sing this. And dance to it as well. The Mazurka. But I'm not very good with um, following teachers teaching dances. I've got to do it my own way. <laughs> and they get upset with me. And quite right. Because I don't follow. So if you are a bit independent, you know, you can find your own way of learning Italian. <laughs> but that can help. Be free. Okay, here we go. Quando senti l'orchestrina tra una danza americana che strimpella una mazzurca dall'aria paesana Pensi allora alla quadriglia d'un bel tempo che passò quando usava la pariglia attaccata all'andò quando non c'erano i tanghi ai foxtrot a la mazurca che ballava la mia nonna con le trecce a penzoloni e con i mutandoni sotto la sua gonna. Quando mio nonno, per baciare la sua mano, non usava la scaletta, ma la bicicletta, fino al primo piano. Adesso primo piano te. I giovincelli di vent'anni o poco più, come eran belli coi baffoni per l'insù, alla mazzurca d'un bel tempo assai lontano, quando prima di sposarsi stavano a guardarsi con le mani in mano. Or si balla la carioca, il sassofono rimbomba, ma mio nonno suona ancora il grammofono a tromba. Pensa in me con nostalgia all'antica gioventù, quando allora ogni Maria non era Mariù. Come era bello quel tempo che fu. Ah, la mazurka che ballava la mia nonna. Come on, all, everyone. Con le trecce a penzoloni e con i mutandoni sotto la sua gonna. Quando mio nonno, per baciare la sua mano, non usava la scaletta ma la bicicletta fino al primo piano. E i giovincelli di vent'anni o poco più, come eran belli coi baffoni per l'insù, alla mazzurca d'un bel tempo assai lontano, quando prima di sposarsi stavano a guardarsi con le mani in mano. Well, I hope you enjoyed that one. <laughs> La Mazurca della Nonna. Huh? These are beautiful songs. And by the way, I am uh, going to come back to the songs with the verbs because there are a lot of verbs in these songs and I haven't touched them yet. So, I will, you know, we've done the words, we've done the adjectives, and then eventually I'll come back to do the to do the verbs, and that will give you most of the sentences. We'll study syntax. That's the way, you know, uh, things are, are written. Uh, and also, uh, we'll do phonology, the way pronunciation works and intonation works. So there's a lot more to language learning than meets the eye, but once you learn the techniques, you actually become a teacher. And uh, then the learning of the language becomes very easy because you'll be able to read 
correctly and understand what you're doing. So now, what, what else did I want to do? Uh, did I have anything else? No. Uh, I think I did the verbs. I did the verbs. That's good. Maybe just uh, uh, let's have a look at um, the adverbs. Adverbs from last week. Well, badly, together, quickly, hard, better, thus, standing, now, peacefully, completely. So this one makes sense, all this, until we learn the verbs. Because by learning the verbs, then you can put the adverb, you add it to the verb. All right, so the, what you can do to, to do yourself a favour is this. Go back to the noun in lesson one and learn the endings of, of words, O, R, A, the plural. So those ones, you have to refine your knowledge of these. They have to be natural to you. The article, the indefinite article, un, una, una, un apostrophe, etc., and examples, you know, un tavolo, un libro, una lavagna, una porta, una luna. Notice that. And then you got the indefinite article here. And uno, when you use uno, in front of words that begin with a, 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 a S plus a consonant. Scolaro. Uno zio. But un aereo. Uh, you don't put an, an apostrophe there, un imbuto. Then the definite article, uh, this one's here. And these are the ones, you have to really perfect your knowledge of this. You can only do this by uh, example. For example, here, you know, you remember Carissimo Pinocchio? Il desiderio, la sera, la lettera, l'amico, la primavera, il segreto, il bambino. Il lettino, il mondo, il babbo. So, il gatto, il grillo, la fata, il giorno, il segreto, il cuore. Notice here, the plurals. Le sere, le lettere, gli amici. So, if you learn these ones here, i gatti, i grilli, le fate, i giorni, i segreti, i cuori, you, you learn how to, uh, you, you have to become familiar with this. And it doesn't matter what book you use or which class you attend. These are basic things that you need to learn. La spina, le spina. Again, you know, and then, of course, the adjective, where do you put it before or after? And then, in via dei ciclamini, remember that? See, there are different words. In via dei ciclamini, in, in, the, in, in, the, in the street of cyclamens. In via dei ciclamini al 123, etc. I don't remember the words unless I've got them in front of me. But here, again, more adjectives. There are a few verbs here. I started doing it. Dio come ti amo, another beautiful song. You remember the prepositions? These ones here. A, su, ti, da, in. So this is the type of revision that will give you greater knowledge of Italian. It's as simple as that. Auxiliary, this is the, one of the first verbs. These are called auxiliary verbs. This one here, essere and avere, to be and to have, we use those in English as well as auxiliaries to the other verbs. I have been, you know, but I have known. I have eaten. I am Italian. Uh, I was, you know, sort of. You you use these auxiliary verbs by themselves or in combination. Then, if you remember, do you know the days of the week? You want to learn them in different languages? You do. These are things that cannot. You have to know the months of the year, the seasons. The numbers, we've got up to 50, 60 so far. 
words, you know, the words, these are also words about themes. So very important to, to know words about il corpo, la scuola, you know, gli animali. They're good pastimes. I've, I've had this pastime all my life. But notice here, I didn't put on purpose, I didn't put the Italian there. Also because I'm writing with a big uh, texter and I, there wasn't enough space, so I thought, no, but m I might as well leave it so, so that you can then put your own uh, into, well, do you remember those words in Italian? How do you say the school, the teacher, the table, the chair? These are the words that you have to remember automatically. You can't think when you're talking. Like me now, I'm not, I don't have notes, I just have my things in front of me, so I give it to you. So, here we are, la pratica batte la grammatica, as so I practice bits grammar. Ma, senza la grammatica non puoi migliorare o perfezionare la lingua che vuoi imparare. So, which one, which one of the languages you want? I've got 20 of them here at Insegna. And I look at those, uh, you know, quite regularly. I look at uh, some books in different languages, and some of them I don't know anything about at all. But I can tell you, I can read Spanish, Turkish, yeah, the, uh, even Chinese, because when they use the uh, when they use the alphabet, you know, you can learn Chinese by using the Roman alphabet, the alphabet that we use. You don't have to write in, you know, in the way they do. You can learn it differently. So th this is um, the prepositions here. But uh, you know, enough of this. Pratica, we need pratica. And this one here is called Piemontesina. This is another song that everyone sings. That everyone sings. And can I say that if you write to me and you say, I would like to have a session, one of your sessions, in which we sing together, we go through the words together, on the song of the songs that I've introduced so far. If you write to me that you want to learn Italian and you express a desire to do so, then I can tailor some of this some of the time in this hour to make you happy on an individual basis. Because not many people come on to uh, these lessons, you know it's very hard unless you commit yourself to it, unless I know about it. So I need to know how many people actually want to learn. Otherwise, these lessons here remain there for future use, basically. Okay, this is Piemontesina. Now, let's go through the words. Piemontesina, uh, the word list. Il giorno, l'amica, gli studi, il pianto, il cuore... La Piemontesina, la Stella, le Sere, il Valentino, lo Studentino, lo Studente, un giorno, il Dottore, la Gente, la Gioventù, l'Amore, il Bacio. The adjectives are passati. Passato, passati, piccolo, piccola, bello, bella, quello, quelle, quella, quelle, biondo, quello, this one here, quelle, quel, they're called demonstrative adjectives and pronouns. I haven't written them down yet. I'll do that next week, maybe. Well, it depends. Biondo, allegro, lontano, povera, mio. And I've shown you mio. Uh, that's possessive adjectives and pronouns. Okay, so have a look at these words here, if you try to remember, because they are here in this song. Piemonte, this is a beautiful song to sing together, and uh, when there are Italian uh, activities around Melbourne, uh, and there's a band there, uh, choirs, they always sing it. And here we go, together. But I'll concentrate on the words rather than, you know, the, the very lively music. Addio bei giorni passati, mia piccola amica, ti devo lasciar. 
Gli studi son già terminati, abbiamo finito così di sognar. Lontano andrò, dove non so, parto col pianto nel cuor, dammi l'ultimo bacio d'amor. Non ti potrò scordare, Piemontesina bella, sarai la sola stella che brillerà per me. Ricordi quelle sere passate al Valentino col biondo studentino che ti stringeva sul cuor. Totina il tuo allegro studente di un giorno lontano e adesso dottor. Io curo la povera gente ma pure non riesco a guarire il mio cuor. La gioventù non torna più, quanti ricordi d'amor a Torino ho lasciato il mio cuore. Now here there's music, blah blah blah, you can sing it, and then, you can, and then the ending is, ricordi quelle sere passate al Valentino, col biondo studentino che ti stringeva sul cuore. So notice here, il Valentino is like a restaurant. Valentino is the name of a young, uh, there's a poem called Valentino. A beautiful one too. So the, these, are the, these are the three songs that I've chosen for today and I have plenty more time uh, to do other things as well and maybe what I will do I will go back to some of the songs oop, we did last week. So, you know, you remember, uh, yeah, La Vita è Bella. Do you remember those? Let me get the, the words. Let me get the, the, the actual song. We do a bit of pratica today, and I might read you something as well uh, from uh, some of the books. So here we go. Uh, j just the songs. Let's let's do the songs. Let's do a few songs today. La vita è bella. Okay. This is Claudio Villa singing. Do you remember the words? Libero sono e giocondo. Giro e girando per mondo. Rido dell'uomo d'affari, del re di denari che conta i milion. Vivo i miei giorni felici, sfuggo le donne di amici. Io senza amor non mi lagno, il migliore compagno è soltanto il mio cuor. La vita è bella e la devi goder, se non hai nulla non ha pure i pensier. Al chiar di luna si può sempre sognar, tutto ciò che si vuole c'è un raggio di sole per farti scaldar. E se amaro il destino un bicchiere di vino fa tutto scordar. Quando la notte è più fonda guardo nascosto nell'ombra con la chitarra tracolla la gente che sfolla dai gran cinema. Sognano le dive e le stelle, ma le mie stelle son quelle, quelle del cielo soltanto, ed allegro io canto per loro lassù. Al chiar di luna si può sempre sognar. Tutto ciò che si vuole c'è un raggio di sole per farti scaldare. So there, you know, you, there's a bit of a mistake there, but doesn't matter, you, just, you can go back. Al chiar di luna si può sempre sognar, tutto ciò che si vuole c'è un raggio di sole per farti scaldare. E se amare il destino un bicchiere di vino fa tutto scordare. Notice, sometimes you lose it when you go slow because the, the actual music then carries you through. 
And so that's where, that's, that's important. Now this, it says, translate to English. Can you translate? Libero means free. Sono, I am. E giocondo, eh? and I, I am free and happy. Giro e girando. Girando is an actual uh, gerund, the gerund in the verb. Giro is the present tense of girare, to go around, and girando as I'm as I am going around where per mondo, per is a is a preposition, mondo il mondo the world, rido ridere second conjugation verb dell'uomo d'affari, del apostrophe is a preposition uomo d'affari men of a, a of, of commerce. Affari, not affairs, but commerce. Uh, you know, somebody who who does business around the world. He laughs at them. I go around the world. I don't care about making money. Rido dell'uomo d'affari del re di denari, the king of money, che conta i milioni. This guy here, this he guy's around the world. He wants to count his money, che conta i milioni. Uh, Vivo, he said, what, what do I do? Vivo i miei giorni felici. I live my happy days. Sfuggo le donne di amici. So, sfuggo le donne, sfuggo di amici. Per le, in other words, when I'm with women, <laughs> I try to avoid my friends. <laughs> Io senza amor non mi lagno. So, I'm not complaining of being without love. The best friend, il migliore compagno, my best friend, is only my heart. So there you are. When you look after your best friend, your heart, you've got no problems. La vita è bella. Life is beautiful. E la devi godere, and you must enjoy it. Se non hai nulla, if you don't have anything, you don't have, non hai pure i pensieri, you don't even have to worry about it, because you don't have anything. So unlike the guy who counts his million. He has to keep on doing trade. He's got to work. Whereas if you don't have anything, <laughs> you don't have to worry about, you don't have the worries that um, having things uh, give you. Al car di luna, uh, in the shadow of the moon, si può sempre sognare. You can just, on a good night, you can always dream, you know, at night. I've done that many times. Just go out and speak to the moon. You can always sing a car di luna. Uh, the moon is a very romantic uh, addition to our life. Tutto ciò che si vuole, all that you want. C'è un raggio di sole. There is a ray of sunshine per farti scaldare, to warm you up. E se, and if, uh, if, What's that? A preposition or a conjunction? It's a conjunction. E and if is a conjunction. And if, because e amaro il destino. Destiny is bitter. Un bicchiere di vino fa tutto scordare. <laughs> Have a glass of wine, but it's a glass at a time, in order for you to forget. Fa tutto scordare, in order for you to forget. Quando la notte è più fondo, when night is deep into the night, guardo nascosto nell'ombra, a look hidden in the shadow. Con la chitarra a tracollo, with the guitar on my shoulder, a tracollo, across, across, you know, my, my, the front, so you've got to play it. La gente che sfolla dai gran cinema. So how are you going to make money? So he gets his guitar, he goes into to the front of the cinemas, la gente che sfolla, that are going away, and he starts to sing. La vita è bella, datemi i soldi. <laughs> so that's how he makes money. Wherever he goes in the world, he goes to the cinemas and he starts, well, we have those people there in the city, they make good money. I've asked one of them, I said, how much do you make? He said, oh, up to four, five hundred bucks a day. I said, it's not bad, more than I do in a month. Ah, <laughs> uh, well, never mind. Sognano le dive e le stelle. 
So what do these people do? Kesfolari cinema that come out of the cinemas. They dream of the stars, the film stars, and of the stars. Male mie stelle son quelle, but my stars are those. Quelle del cielo, those ones up in the sky. I don't care about the ones from Hollywood. Quelle del cielo, or Australia for that matter, or Italy for that matter, or France, or China, or Japan, but we don't go there, do we? Uh, you have to come to my lesson on Thursday night to learn about the rest of the world. Because there we do world history from the beginning. And I'm doing Suma and Akkad at the moment. And uh, after that, I'm thinking, I'm not going to go to Crete. I'll go to India and and China, and or China and India, depend. And then I'll go to South America, and then I'll go to the Vikings, and then I'll go to Europe. It depends. We'll see what happens. So there you are. See, when you're teaching too, you don't have to follow a prescription. You know, the teacher who wants to teach knows his stuff. Uh, but now, you know, you, the courses, course books, they want you to do it precisely what they say. They want to box you in. You can't box in teachers. They have to give of themselves. That The good teachers do that. But that doesn't mean they're denying all the help that they can get. It just means that they have to remain free in their mind about how the students react to their work and what each one needs. It's a big job, like having children. With two or three, we sort of, you know, think it's hard. Well, just think if you had 150 of them in a week, <laughs> day in, day out for 30 years. Ok, sogno le dive le stelle, ma le mie stelle sono quelle, quelle del cielo. Ed allegro, e ne ho, e happy, io canto, from cantare, I sing, per loro, for them. So, instead of saying per le stelle, per loro, see, that's a pronoun. Loro can also be an adjective, le loro stelle, but per loro, las, lassù, lassù, what's that? Is it an well, per loro lassù, is it a conjunction? Or is it a preposition? What is it? So I've got to work it out. I've got to work it out too. Al chiar di luna si può sempre sognare. So, tutto ciò che si vuole c'è un raggio di sole per farti scaldare. E se amare il destino, un bicchiere di vino fa tutto scordare. Now we're going through the translation of that. Yeah. Look at this. We've gone through the translation. We sang it before. Went through the words. Now we're going to sing it again, once more. But this time together with me, because you know the words now. La vita è bella by Claudio Villa is a tenor. We can't compete. But we can sing on our own. Don't let people tell you that no, you can't sing. Because when I came to Australia, if I sang in the street, people thought I was mad. And I used to live in Kew. And you know what Q was famous for at the time, because now uh, all those people in those houses, they were hidden away from society. They're in society now. And they built, um, you know, apartments now. Never mind. La vita è bella. Libero sono e giocondo, giro e girando per mondo. Rido dell'uomo d'affari, del re di denari che conta i milioni. Vivo i miei giorni felici, sfuggo le donne di amici. Io senza amor non mi lagno, il migliore compagno è soltanto il mio cuor. La vita è bella e la devi goder, se non hai nulla. Non ha pure il pensier, al chiar di luna si può sempre sognar, tutto ciò che si vuole c'è un raggio di sole per farti scaldar, e se amaro il destino un bicchiere di vino fa tutto scordar. Quando la notte è più fonda, guardo nascosto nell'ombra, con la chitarra tracollo la gente che sfolla da gran cinema.
sognano le dive e le stelle, ma le mie stelle son quelle, quelle del cielo soltanto, ed allegro io canto per loro lassù. Al chiar di luna si può sempre sognar, al chiar di luna si può sempre sognar, tutto ciò che si vuole c'è un raggio di sole per farti scaldar, e se amaro il destino un bicchiere di vino fa tutto scordar. <laughs> Did you notice that? I did very well at the last bit. I got it wrong again, but I just repeated the, the sentence and bang, went back into it. Now, we're almost there. Today I did this. There's one other song I would do. I've got the four more minutes, uh, and uh, I'd like to do this one here because uh, this is Ricche Poveri. We are all rich and poor. Ricchi e Poveri uh, is from, Ricchi e Poveri is a, a band in Italy and they were poor in money but rich in culture. They were from Genova and they um, got together on the beach, uh, going to the beach and, you know, in summer they were very young and they got together and began to sing uh, on the beach and as a result people would come around them and listen to them, like what I'm doing now. You know, not many people come to listen to me doing my lessons. But if I do it on the beach, maybe a few more people will come on. But And they did, and they got together, I think, five or six years before Abba. Abba actually knew about um, Ricchia Poveri. So, four and four. And this one, one of the songs that one of them left, this one here came later, Come Vorrei. I'll do this, but I haven't got time to explain it. So I'm just going to sing it together with you. Here, here we go. Ci sono giorni in cui non dormo e penso a te. Sto chiuso in casa col silenzio per amico. Mentre la neve dietro ai vetri scende giù. Ti aspetto qui vicino al fuoco. In questo inverno c'è qualcosa che non va. Non è Natale da una volta nella vita, eppure è stato solamente un anno fa. Speriamo che non sia finita. Come vorrei, come vorrei, amore mio, come vorrei che tu mi amassi a modo mio, che questa sera troppo triste, troppo uguale, non fosse più. Senza di te, come vorrei, come vorrei, amore mio, come vorrei che questo amore che va via non si sciogliesse come fa la neve al sole, senza parole. Dovrei capirti quando vedo che vai via e non amarti quando non vuoi farti amare, senza cadere in una nuova gelosia che solo tu mi fai provare. Come vorrei, come vorrei, amore mio, come vorrei che tu mi amassi a modo mio, che questa sera troppo triste, troppo uguale, non fosse più senza di te. Come vorrei, come vorrei, amore mio, come vorrei che questo amore che va via non si sciogliesse come fa la neve al sole, senza parole. E questa volta un'altra donna non verrà a cancellare la tua impronta sul cuscino. Anche la luna gliel'ho chiesto e non ci sta. Non vuole più starmi vicino. There you are. Even the moon doesn't want to come close. So, come vorrei, how I would like. This is worthwhile. But it's time now to uh, begin uh, the conclusion of this uh, uh, eighth lesson. I've done already seven. This is the eighth one. And I was going to put them up with my technician today, but I forgot I had the lesson on. <laughs> so, I, now to get him, it will take me, I don't know how many you know, days it'll be before he can see me again. But anyway, just keep on going to my 
a Facebook Live, uh, Facebook page, and go down to uh, Lesson 1 and work your way through. So there you are. We had a good time today. I'm enjoying it very much. Um, and I think uh, next time I will give you maybe the first conjugation of the verb. So we're well and truly uh, coming into the translations now of the songs. So I might go back to some of the songs we've done and give you those in translation and sing them together. So if you go through my lessons, get yourself the words and put them on your iPhone. All right. On that note, I would like to thank you very much, Colleen, for watching, and Angela as well, and Rose. Rose Aranone, Dimilta. Fantastic. Three people. Wow. I'm doing very well. But can I say this? During the week, then, you know, some of the ones where very few people have come on when I actually have the lesson, they come on and uh, I've got up to 40, 50 people so far. So if you share my work as well, more people will come on as um, they learn that they can get free lessons, free Italian lessons. And if you want uh, help, come to see me at Insegna here in Coburg North. Ring me up first so you can make an appointment and uh, then I'll be, you know, we'll have a chat and we'll go on from there. Ciao, grazie mille, ci rivediamo la prossima settimana. To you all. Ciao from Tom Padula, from Insegna Booksellers, Tom Padula TV on YouTube and everything else. Arrivederci alla prossima settimana di nuovo. Okay? Ciao, ciao.